the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The words of a famous hymn by David Peacock. Will you come and follow me if I would call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I would call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I would call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I would call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you've found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? In the Gospel text today, we encounter a man with two of his sons. He both gives them the same duty to do. The first one answers, I will not go. But he ends up going anyway and does the task that is set before him. It's very much like in an argument. <clears throat> there you are, heated up. All of the emotions are nice and bubbling and you're throwing your toys out of the cot. And eventually the argument comes to its logical conclusions and you need to sit down and close your mouth. But the other party says to you, oh, sit down and shut up. You look to them and you know that you ought to. But simply because they've instructed you, you'll simply look at them and say, I will not. A few moments later you sit. Almost as if to say, I'll do it on my own terms anyway. The second son, the first son, of course, does this. Almost as if he was in a state of defiance, probably like a young teenage man of adolescent age. I'll do it when I want to do it. I want to show this man that I have my own will as well. I'll get round to it eventually. But I must put up some sort of resistance. The second son is told to do the same task of working in the vineyard, almost as if to try and impress his father by showing a sense of obedience. He says, yes, sir, I will go. But he ends up not fulfilling his promise. He ends up not doing what he was called to do. It reminds me of when we were much younger. During the holidays, staying at home with our grandmother, we'd get spoiled during the course of the day and everything would be fun. But as mom had left for work early in the morning, she'd say, make sure the house is clean before I come back home. Yes, mom. Not really. And the car would come screaming up the driveway and all of a sudden we remembered after all the fun, we had said yes. And there in a quick scurry, hurried as we were, we tried to scratch around and clean up as much as we possibly could. But her steps were a bit too fast for our actions. See, she would be disappointed because we had promised that we would do what she had asked us to do. But our promises were not fulfilled. This movement from no to yes is quite an interesting fundamental Christian pattern that we find. Initially we find St. Peter at the time that Jesus is to enter into his passion, denying Christ, denying ever having known him. The disciples, of course, were those who were expected to be followers of Jesus, even to the cross. And indeed, Peter promises Christ that, Lord, where you go, I will go. It's almost like the friendship of drunkards. Where you die, I die. But when it came to crunch time, Peter ran away. No, I don't know that man. No, I don't know that man. No, I don't know that man. I'm sure he must have been violent at some point. But later on in his life, Peter, being overwhelmed again by the truth of the Gospel, the truth of who Christ is to him and to the world, turns around and starts responding yes in the way that he lived his life. And so he becomes an apostle of Christ, 
and says yes even with his martyrdom, giving up his very life. St. Paul himself was the persecutor of Christians, if not among the greatest of the same. He spent his life chasing after those who were followers of Christ, ensuring that they ended up in jail or dead because they were dangerous people. His reaction to the gospel initially was the response of no. But St. Paul, upon encountering Christ, has a change of mind and a change of life. He gives his life to the Lord and lives a life worthy of his calling. His response becomes yes. And his yes moves him to the point where he loses the very life that he had taken pride in. St. Francis of Assisi, born into wealth, denounces his privilege and goes to find his treasure rather in serving the poor taking the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, looking for the face of Christ to those who are poor. This is not to say that he turned away from the rich and found them unworthy of Christ, but it is to say that in the birth of privilege, there is once again an initial no, but his yes is to be found in his humble service to the people of God, whom others would rather not associate with. You see, this is a pattern that is common. And often this is a pattern that you and I also follow in our daily lives. We have our vows that we took when we were baptized, which we affirmed when we were confirmed. Some of us who came to take further vows when we were ordained, how often though, having said yes at that point, have we said no in the ways that we live our lives? Do we serve Christ in all people? Do we do it with humility? Or do we do it in order to be seen and praised ourselves? If it is the latter, then our answer has become no. But if it is the former, then our answer is yes. But the fulfillment of our answer is not to be found in the words of our mouths, but it is to be found in the service of our lives. You and I, my dear friends, often find ourselves carrying various crosses. And while the crosses that we carry are heavy, it's as if Christ indeed keeps calling us to even more. That one's too light. There's another one for you to pick up. And oftentimes our response is no. Lord, I can't do this. But if we are to trust in the Lord's strength and His mercy to sustain us, then even after our initial, no, Lord, I can't, we find ourselves very quietly walking towards that same cross that we thought would overburden us. We take it up and we shoulder on and we move on with the journey. You see, if you and I are to submit ourselves to the power of God and to entrust ourselves into his love and his mercy, each time, even when we have the temptation of saying no, our answer will become yes in what we come to fulfill of what God has called us to do and to be in this world. My dear friends, as we come to receive Christ to the blessed sacraments as we make our Holy Communion today, may we come to find the one who nourishes us, who after each call summons us to say yes with the service of our lives. May we not fear to shoulder the burden of the cross and may we, in the service of our lives, entrust ourselves totally to the mercy and the strength of God. For without God, we can do nothing. The one who calls us, who gives us his body and his blood, his soul and divinity in the Eucharist, does so because he loves us. And he summons us out of love to go and be that which we receive in the world. And so, my dear friends, as we stand at this point, Christ is sending us out into the world to work in his vineyard. May we not answer just with our lips and say yes or no, but may our answer be in the service of our lives. And beautifully captured in the last verse of the hymn that I recited to you earlier. Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps serve. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you, 
and you in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.